we're, today we're going to do a chem abrasion, which is a chemical peel and derm abrasion. This is mostly for acne scarring and other problems such as sun damage, wrinkling, or freckle-like spots, sometimes chicken pox. The first part of the procedure, we're going to put a light acid on the face. It's called trichloroacetic, which will help in the blending process with the dermabrasion and yield a smooth surface. We'll start now by applying to the forehead with slight pressure. Sometimes there's a slight burning sensation, but that will be neutralized with an alcohol water solution. If you look carefully, you'll see that the skin turns slightly white, which is a coagulation of the skin, the outer part of the skin called the epidermis. And it burns a lot. And the patient says it burns a lot, which will be neutralized right now. Okay, let's neutralize that. Okay, but just keep your eyes closed now. We'll turn over to the left side. Is that burn for a long time? No, just for a few seconds and it will stop. Before the chemical peel, the skin is prepared with alcohol and acetone to defat the skin surface. When the patient complains of burning, we neutralize, but try to achieve the white coagulum on the skin. Mm. Okay, that's a signal that we have to neutralize. Okay, at this point, the patient is prepared now for the dermabrasion. The chemical has been applied, the trichloroacetic, and a white coagulum has formed all over. And this softens the skin, making it easier for the brush to glide over the skin for the dermabrasion. The area of involvement, in this particular case, scarring, is outlined with a marking pencil on both sides. In this case, we're going to do the mid-cheek area and down partially to the chin. We'll begin now by covering the face with towels in a triangular fashion. And then we'll freeze the skin with fluoethyl, which is a skin refrigerant to make it hard. This will allow us to cut into or abrade the skin evenly. We also have to keep the skin quite tight during the procedure. We'll begin now. Okay. We then take our brush and lightly abrade the skin. This is called a skin planing. After the light abrasion, there's a slight oozing, and that indicates that the abrasion was even. We'll continue on to the next area. The patient should try not to touch the face. And we 
your braid into the adjacent area. This is usually not painful. It just stings slightly. The longer the freeze, the harder the surface, the deeper the cut may be, depending upon the brush. In this case, we're just doing a superficial abrasion. So the cutting is not that deep. At the jawline, where we're at now, we must keep it light, because there are certain nerves close to the skin. If you freeze too deeply, you can injure the nerve. Also, if you freeze too deeply, the skin is quite thin here, and you can cut into the skin easily. This is the area of a slight blending, so we use a light abrasion. Now we're getting into the deeper areas and we can use a deeper freeze. We always shield the patient's eye and nose in case the brush slips. This is how the face appears after the first stage of the dermabrasion. There's a slight oozing of the serum, this clear yellow fluid on both sides. We can generally see that the abrasion has been complete, but we'll check now for skip areas and go over very lightly the entire area so that we'll get a nice smooth appearance. We'll now return to the right side and do that and then go over the left side. In the second stage, sometimes we see deeper acne pits, which sometimes we mark with a marking pencil, but other times not necessary. And we go over that area and try to blend that in with the rest. Occasionally, as I mentioned before, we sometimes mark the deeper areas so that we dermabrade around the area, smoothing out the entire surface. We'll do that in this case with this irregular patch with the darker areas marked as deeper scars that will plane down the surrounding surface and everything will be smooth. At this time, the dermabrasion is complete. The patient's face will be covered with a bandage overnight. The bandage will then be removed. The face will continue to ooze a clear yellow fluid, which eventually will stop the patient will then compress the area in a few days with warm water soaks and apply a soothing ointment to prevent any crusting. This aids also in healing. Repigmentation can usually be expected within three to four weeks. What you see here is the finished product and the bandage can be removed 24 hours from now. Stop it. <laughs> well, I'm through the room or something. Steven.